The Nashville music scene is very cool and a uh, big reason why we're based here. In 75, when they opened this facility, it was just to augment production for Kalamazoo. So they initially just created Les Paul. Once the staff started developing their skills, they started adding more models. By the end of the 70s, they were making a wide variety of solid bodies. By 84, they shut down Kalamazoo completely and moved everything into this building. This plant was then Gibson USA. And, and the charter here at USA is to make solid body electrics and, and also semi-solid, so the ES line we're, we're making here. The rough mill building itself opened in the early 2000s. Prior to that, all the rough wood machining and processing was done in what is now final assembly. But when you're doing all the rough wood processing, you know, obviously there's a lot of sawdust and, and contamination like that. That doesn't work well with finishes. When we receive the wood, we check it with a moisture meter so we get the moisture content. And you typically want to have that wood between 8 and 10 percent. That's considered equilibrated to where it's going to be stable. If it's too dry, it can split and crack. If it's too moist, it'll, it'll dry up later and uh, cause structural problems. Gibson's most known for extensive use of mahogany and maple tops, for, in, for instance, on Les Pauls. We start with the raw mahogany lumber and we rip it and cross cut it into the appropriate sizes. So we'll join the edges to prepare them to be glued and then we have a rotating glue rack. When we use maple tops for guitars, uh, which the Les Paul is you know, iconic and known for, we have different levels. Um, you know, the iconic models you know, may have a th you know, two, three or four A top. That's the degree of figure, the striation in the grain. So when we get the maple for the top, we'll book match it. The book matching process, the, the top starts out as an eight quarter blank, which is two inches wide. So we split it down the center and open it up like a book because you'll have that flame matching up at that center and it'll just have that book match symmetry on each half. If it's a solid guitar, we have locator pins so the top will align properly on center to the back. The guitar tops are then sent in a glue application machine that kind of looks like a planer or a thickness sander, but it applies the glue to the top. Then the top is installed on the back of the guitar, and then they're stacked up. So we have hydraulic presses that will hold over 100 guitar bodies in one pressing. I run what we call a Northwood CNC. I cut out the bodies that have been glued up and rough cut into the shape of a guitar. I work on everything from the standard Les Pauls, Studio Les Pauls, Flying V's, quite a bit of a variety. CNC stands for Computer Numerically Controlled. These days, when we design a guitar, instead of drawing it you know, on a drafting board like we did in the old days, we'll do a CAD drawing and then we'll send that CAD drawing to a programmer. He'll send that program to the machine. It just made life around Gibson a lot easier when we started getting them in here. They were more consistent than most machines. In the old days, before CNC, we had pin routers. And you had one operator moving that template and that body over a moving router cutter. Not only is it higher capacity and higher accuracy, but it's higher safety, and that's most important for our employees. Most of the people here are just really good people. You know, that's one of the best things I think that makes the whole place uh, better. Everybody 
works together pretty well. Most everybody, you know, is out there to make a good quality guitar and get the job done. And I mean, it's kind of like, a, you know, just anything we do, we got it. You're kind of looking at your next next department as your basically your customer. So you want to send them whatever they need to make sure the guitars made the highest quality and everything, so they can do their job and then pass it on to the next one. When you've been here as long as I have, and you see them on TV, that's, that's where the pride factor comes in. Seeing how I make the Gibson guitar, that's the first thing I'm looking for, because if you look for the peg head, it's gonna be on there. And then you see the Gibson on there, it's like, I wonder how long he's had that one. Might have been one I made, you know? So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's great, it really is.